Live from news, bullies at YouTube internet videos denied Hummer 6. The episode is inert. Below in description is link to new Humgrum adventure. I'm Kant Brockman, and this has been some news. Greatest Hugs Volume 1 The Homer Simpson Soundtrack 100 Cassettes Coming soon from White House Have you ever heard your mother sing? James? Yes, this is James. Uh, I have so many barred bootleg t-shirts to sell you. You always do great work for me. James enjoys working with boys. James, <laughs> do you believe in life after love? People today are healthier and drinking less. You know, if it wasn't for the cigarette machine, I'd still be in high school. Magic 8-Ball, will I pass Skitter's breast inspection today? Wow, the ball is great. Give me a go. Will Bart get his Alienware laptop this year? What? How am I meant to get on the sex blogs without a good computer? I'm serious about my collection. My mom, the bitch doesn't understand. I need Microsoft's help to view these birds. Will Bart and I be friends forever? 
will will Bart and I be friends today? William, my mom won't let me be your friend anymore. She says you're a bad influence. But, but I like being around Marge. I'm really sorry, William. Who will be my friend now? Is there anyone left to be friends with? with? Smithers, release the hounds. Excellent. Idly o, neighbor! Oakley dokely, neighborino! But, Dad, I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat animals. But, Lisa, animals are so delicious. There's the animal we get bacon from, the animal we get ham from, the animal we get sausage from. Dad! That's all the same animal. Oh, sure, Lisa. A magic animal that all the wonderful foods come from. Forward, not backward. Upwards, not downwards. And always twirling, twirling for freedom. There are people who do impressions, and there are those who do not. Ted is funny. He loves to tell jokes. They are from the eight-year-old joke book. The GOP candidate does his best home release of Flanders and Mr. Burns' impressions. He's one of a kind, and I'm happy to leave it at that. That's why you're the judge and I'm the law-talking guy. Communication is clearly an issue in your relationship. How long have you been together now, Bettina? <sighs> Eight years. He proposed to me on a dolphin cruise. What do you think happened? He's become so distant. Chadwick, would you care to explain your behaviour? and this is alternative news you can trust. A kale recipe left in sand after freak tsunami. Proof of a grand architect or mere accident. And what are we meant to make of Bill Gates' pledge to eliminate paleo? Hooroo! Gail, it's Bettina. Just wanted to give you a bell about our coffee date, the Savo. Of course, Bettina. I'm just finishing off a vlog for my YouTube channel. YouTube? The things I would do to Adam Clayton in front of God and everyone. Anyway, cheers for the reminder. ta Any drinks to start, ladies? Are your almonds activated in tap or artesian water? Oh, no. Look, I'll just have the water the almonds were soaked in without the chemtrail residue, please. You'll need a purifier for that. They're on sale next door at Tree of Life. Can I get some bong water on the rocks? This service is a disgrace. I'm a hair's breadth from starting the granola riots. Oh, I didn't see you over there, Marjorie. Don't blow my cover. I'm out here keeping mum. You on duty, Marge? Saw some boys put the expensive X in the cheap carton. I made the eye look like a Jackson Pollock. And then I killed them. I'm sure that's just boys being boys, Marjorie. Got a trash! Courtesy of the chef. Talk about fancy. I haven't been this excited since I saw Sophie Monk at Coles. Did you hear about Betty Ann? Turns out she was living in an Ikea display home her entire adult life. Can't imagine what that'd be like. I mean, they're no Grace Brothers. You reckon that salmonella was in season? 
I met Bettina at the movies in the year 2000, only a month after the Y2K virus wreaked incalculable havoc on the earth. Both of us had gold class tickets for The Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps. Eddie Murphy's grandma was so wonderful in that film. Bettina was a good friend to all of us. I'll never forget her funny disposition. And although I appreciate all she did for us, do we really have to foot her $8,000 jams to Bill? But some might say it's a small price to pay for the joy she brought into our lives. I too shared an affinity for polyphonic ringtones. I will now play this video to honour Bettina's memory. I made this for a TAFE assignment. sure what I hate more. Mondays are minorities. But we can all get behind a lasagna stand on every corner on Cinco de Mayo. I'm a huge cat. So big and large. I'm a huge cat that will eat the economy. My appetite for cash knows no bounds, I'm afraid. I'm fat as hell and I'm not gonna take this anymore. Text this number to vote Hellboy, and I will make sure that all PS2s are discounted at Christmas. Hillary, Hillary for prison, send her back to the pound. <laughs> Tell it like it is, Lyman. That woman is nothing but a shell bucket. Yeah! <laughs> so don't judge the judge, please, because there is only one judge. Because my name is Donald Hellboy Judge. Phew. Hi guys, this is Hus, and I'm here to tell you that I have completed the William Drive bus right on time. Right on time! There's a link in the description. Use it! This is a pen video that cannot be missed, and you can quote me on that. That's it, I'm logging off. Sayonara! Blessing. Mm, uh, yeah, he's here with me. 
He'll be out in a minute. You're quiet today. I thought you only did that when it suited you. I just don't want to leave. I know you have lofty ambitions, Blessing. That parking space has had your name on it for a long time. Perhaps if you'd done better, you could have been a real asset to the management of Southern Cracker. Oh, I'm sorry. It's alright. I just could have used a familiar face around, that's all. Listen, uh, against the better judgment of everyone, I am willing to help you out, but this has to go both ways. There are things you can do to help me. Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? Did you have to take my parking spot, you shit bastard? What the fuck? Is it a bit late to go out for a run, don't you think? It's not that late. I can stay up if I want. You're a growing man. I'm in no position to tell you what to do. I'll leave that to your parents. My dad? I couldn't just leave you out there in the cold. They'd be worried sick. Who knows what could have happened to you? What's your name? William. Last name? Van Houten. Nah, I don't know it. I thought maybe I'd know your family. It's a small community, we're all connected in some way. Do you live around here? New Springfield, about half a mile away. It's not that far. I don't really want to go home. New Springfield, that's the housing estate. <laughs> Long time ago it was called something else. We used to hang out there as kids. Yeah, it's just me and my dad. We've had to move all over the place. What happened to your mom, is she? She's not dead. She just doesn't really want to know us, I guess. I haven't had so much as a phone call in years. Grown up problems. Trust me, it's not your fault. Won't your friends miss you if you leave town? I don't know where they are. I've been in that boat for a while. Everyone's gone. Are you scared of me, William? Do I look scared? 
You just look like you've stood up to someone bigger than you. I'm not scared of you. Good. Four billion years of evolutionary processes have led us to this moment. Shaped by uninhabitable conditions, Homo sapiens has become honed into a more resilient, robust species with a muscular crust bringing to mind some kind of bipedal tardigrade were such a freak to actually exist. Curiously, they are now entirely comprised of protein molecules allowing even children to bench press in the gravitational hellhole outside. Today, the strongmen will enter a combat, bodies caked in viscous fluid as they make the case for membership into the utmost evolutionary tier of the species. I am privileged to be studying these swollen idiots in their natural habitat, as they partake in ritualized displays of aggression and the distribution of painful scronkage. It's another fine post-nuclear morning over here at the DTF Arena, Stu, in this stunning, crystallized desert we call home. And here we are, two legends who need no introduction. You are now listening to The Stu, former heavyweight champion of the 2003 Stereosonic, and his co-host, the exalted strongman, Luciano Biscuit. <laughs> Wrestler? I never knew her. <laughs> I never knew her. Eviscerated by the bomb and generously reanimated as the brains by the patronage of his majesty, the good Mr. McManus, CEO of the league and lord of the irradiated dunes. <laughs> Wrestler? I never knew him. You got one hell of a match coming up today, folks. Reigning champion Armitage Shanks will defend his title from a dangerous new challenger, a people's champ. Now that's the kind of hard scum that clings on to the toilet floor. <laughs> Tell me about it, brother. I heard he really whips the llama's ass. Okay, Shanks, this challenger of yours has been running his mouth around the traps, saying you're not hard. Are you gonna box his ears or what? Listen, mate, you know I'm always down to fight. This English bloke, he thinks he's it. He's nothing but a grunk. And I know full well who put him up to this. Clarkson Farage and all those spineless dogs, damn it, you kip. Remember the divine words of Shanks 316? Fear is the cousin of death. Death is the cousin of the devil. The devil fears only Armitage Shanks. Now that's hard. There's a reason I'm the all-time favorite of Mr. McManus. Armitage Shanks has the blood of a legend. A fair dinkum champion of the people. A real bloke's bloke. Deep down, jabroni, in your cold British heart, you know you are nothing but a side dish, and I'm the family box. Now rack up, you shithouse bloody Nazi. Okay, that's a bit fresh. Ooh, boom, shaka laka. Better give him some ice for that burn. Ladies and men, 
crush his skeleton. Crush it! T and A! Where's the T and A? Please, Shanks, I take it all back. Remain. Remain. Too late, Romper Stomper. Now that's the T. The stew is terrified. Shit, a brick, I've mashed the bastard. Better clear off. It's about time I got in touch with me feminine side. July of 2019, Snorch acquired the rights to the lost Paul Thomas Anderson movie, Room for Bad Boys, made in 2006 and starring Sylvester Stallone. For a limited time only, Snorch will finally make this unseen cinematic work available on a state-of-the-art digital versatile disc. Don't miss out on owning a rare piece of cinematic history today. Bye now. My name is Bart. Did I hear you talk about evolution? Sure, Lenny. About evolution and everything in between. I remember when I was a kid, I used to play soccer with the pumpkins. Never thought I'd sink this low, little Bart. Did you? Live from news. Every year, the Teen Mom OG fans go wild at the MTV Movie and TV Awards. For some reason, they're obsessed with Sophia Bush and her son, Enzo who gets nominated for an award. They cheer as they watch the ceremony on TV. Oh, Chick barely covers my rent. Can't pay it back. We'll commit more criminals. Weird stuff is happening. People are getting too old. Old people are getting sick. And Bart is the town idiot. He thinks life is fun. Oh sure, Lissa is having a great time, eating honey and doing drugs. But don't get drunk or do drugs. If you do, you'll get killed and eaten by the animals. And Bart will be king. Hello? Hammer, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're listening, Hammer. Not now, mate. I need to get back to work. You need a Dorif. Huh? 
You need a Dorf Hammer. Are you listening? No. You need to go fuck yourself. Look, Jerry, I've seen lots of bad things in my life. From women who have had it too easy, to gangsters, to zombies. But the one thing I've always wanted to do was be a comedian. My mom always said that you needed a good wardrobe to be a comedian. Isn't that right, Jerry? But, but I like my money. I'm serious about my collection. I have a lot of VHSs of Seinbluth in my collection. Do you have any Ric Flair tickets in Australia? No, but I'll give you one thousandth of your restaurant bill. I'll give you one thousand if you let me try this new veg. One thousandth of your restaurant bill. That's all I care about. All right, and now we're speaking to Ramadou's fan 123, who takes the videos of Homer Simpson by Hutz, a mysterious figure from somewhere, and puts them on YouTube and Vimeo for the internet's consumption. How are you, Rapidos? I'm not too bad at the moment. How about you? I'm doing fine. Where can I start? Uh, let's start with This Is Not Bart 2. I believe that once again this year, uh, Hutz is uh, contributing some artwork to a exhibition going on at Art Hive around Sound Summit. What exactly can people be prepared to see there? Video, drawings, or...? I'm assuming that the Hutz cartoons are going to be part of this is not why, just judging from the fact that um, Stillo from Seinbelly 2 is the display picture on Facebook, so I'm assuming that it's a part of it. Hutz hasn't <laughs> mentioned anything about any drawings, so I'm assuming that um, it would just be the whole series and the latest episodes. I think last time the This Is Not Bad exhibition was on episodes one to four, I think was screened. I think five was still being made at that time. But um, yeah, it's a really cool exhibition, really cool art, and the place that it's being held at Art Hive often hosts a variety of really interesting pop culture themed art shows. So it was Hutz's over the moon about being contacted about um, including his videos in the exhibition. It's really interesting to see something like like that happen. Well, in Brisbane, that kind of thing doesn't happen with a lot of video art exhibitions and whatnot, where you know there's parody involved and things like that. That kind of area of art, and especially flash animation, isn't really uh, usually traditionally covered. So it is great, in fact, that they went out and organised that kind of thing. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, when I've gone to a lot of these um, pop culture themed art shows, I've been told that uh, something like Homer Simpson is something that they would usually see on the internet, and so they find it weird when it's placed within the context of like an art show. <laughs> a lot of people were surprised by it. I think. In all things new with Hutz, uh, just released was Greatest Hutz Volume One. Do you know Hutz's decision for releasing a, uh, a soundtrack to the Homer Simpson series? Since about the fourth episode, um, I've been inundated with messages almost like daily, I think, about the Homegrum song. You know, the song that the old Simpson sings to the young Homer. I think people actually want it on iTunes, but I'm a bit concerned about the legalities of that. But um, mm. the other day, someone posted a comment on the Facebook page just asking for a few tracks from the series, and I just suggested it to Hutz, and a few days later, he sent me the album cover and really quickly put together the soundtrack. I was actually expecting it to take a lot longer, but he actually ripped off some bonus tracks as well. Yeah, like, that but, was, um, yeah, it was quite impressive that he was able to put together quite a, a, you know, a whole album of material there with the outtakes and a cover of Sanitarium. <laughs> Yeah, I was very surprised by that. I'm usually surprised by, you know, what he produces because I'm kept in the dark for a lot of the time. But the sanitarium cover was, was quite unexpected. What with Homer Simpson 6 now out, and uh, it's got a bit of different animation in there too that kind of looks like a bit of a storyboard. It seems like with the flashbacks and like kind of shifting dimensions, that Homer Simpson seems to be getting more complicated by the second. I'm assuming, because it's been the case since the original few, that it is just him working on them. But at the same time, as you say, there are different, you know, different art styles and everything. So I'm really not sure. It's, sometimes I wonder if it's kind of deliberately crude and then gets more refined. But I, at the same time, I'm not too sure. It's, I am really kept in the dark with the production for a lot of them, which is why Five was such a pleasant surprise. I know a lot of people were really surprised by it being live action, but I suppose I probably would have been the most surprised because when I received that AVI, you know, five months later, <laughs> it was, it was a bit scary. 
Um, no, so to take it out from what was, you know, traditionally a flash animation and, you know, a lot of flash animations don't usually take the step to go to something that has a higher production value. Well, actually, I was going to say, I believe it's not a flash animation because Huff has actually hit me up about putting the Homer Simpson series on new grounds before. And that was something that I was really interested in doing. I thought that there would be a lot of people on that website that would probably enjoy the humor or the kind of horror of the series. But I didn't have much luck because the video files were too large. But um, I believe he uses he uses Microsoft Paint for the first two, and the rest uh, maybe Paint Shop Pro or something. But I'm you know I'm pretty certain it's not Flash actually. Well, that's interesting that Hutz wanted to have things on Newgrounds. So obviously, I got a very kind of clear vibe with that, with subverted and perverted pop culture. Of course, you know, there were things like Pico School, a Samagotchi, and all those parody that came out of Newgrounds. And it seems that it is kind of informed from that internet era. Would you say that Hutz was uh, a big fan of Flash animation during its rise to fame? I've definitely shown Hutz some things that have been compared to Homer Simpson, things like Bart the General and Sinopis Set. And when I started getting hit up about those cartoons, I just messaged them to him because I was curious if maybe they would have influenced him. And he liked them. He liked them a lot, but he hadn't seen them prior to that. So I'm not sure about New Grounds either. I have seen Bart the General, and I, I think previously to that, I did see Sinopis Et. Yeah, the um, the guy behind Snuffer Set has hit me up on the YouTube channel a few times. Somehow it got into my head that I thought he was also Australian, but I I really have no idea anymore. <laughs> but the general, that has to be Australian, right? I think so, because the first episode has um, the native guy in it. Yeah, but that could also be the UK. <laughs> yeah, that's true, actually. A few people um, for a long time, because we were obviously keeping things... I don't know, like I was taking into account how paranoid Hutz is about the internet, so I wasn't letting on too much about where it was from. It became more obvious as more Australian pop culture references came out in the episodes, but um, a lot of people thought that he was from the UK, and I'm not actually sure what it was in the episode that made them think that. Oh, well, it's got ABC with um, the Bananas and Pajamas, it's got Huey, Channel 10 there, and of course, Sterlo, which is uh, Channel 9's The Footy Show. Yeah, I was about to say that um, I've noticed that it's predominantly Channel 10 programs, which usually revolved around the 6pm time slot for The Simpsons in Australia. Like, I think Huey's Cookie Adventures a long time ago used to be, like, before, or, you know, like an hour before The Simpsons, and I didn't notice that all of those programs were kind of closely linked. I mean, another thing, you pointed out Sterlo and um, the Sterlo connection, and I think uh, with some other characters in that Side Loose episode, and maybe in a few other Homer Simpson episodes, they seem to be tied together by Australian advertising. I noticed that Side Blue 2 was especially concerned with popular advertisements starring like celebrities and B celebrities. Um, Sterlo and the Elephant, which was a, um, a cool company around this area that Sterlo was the mascot for, and I've noticed that that's more the connection rather than necessarily TV shows that have been on. Um, Huey and Bilo is the other big one. Mm, yeah, and he actually seems to be really pre- <laughs> preoccupied with Bilo, which is strange. I mean, considering that Bilo at least around here isn't around anymore. I've never, yeah, I've never understood his obsession with Bilo <laughs> because it's been in about three episodes now. So. And I wasn't, and still, am not completely aware of what the whole dead Bart thing is. But I know that a lot of people were saying that the first time that the um, first episode kind of went viral. I'm not exactly able to recall how I got into Homer Simpson, but I think it might have had to be through a related video when I was looking up all the, the dead Bart legend. Oh, okay. And there are, there's fan videos of that as well. Someone has made their own, or well, a few people have made their own dead Bart videos to mm. add to it and, of course, uh, a creepypasta and stuff like that. <laughs> Just before the third one was uploaded, I recalled seeing all those creepypasta videos. I didn't actually know what that meant for a long time, so I was quite amused by that. But I saw one that was uploaded trying to spread this legend about this thing called Homer.WMV, which is not at all what happened <laughs> with, you know, how the episodes came to be on the internet. But I thought that was interesting, especially since there seemed to be a Spanish creepypasta video about Homer Simpson, which is really exciting to me. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> they got the completely wrong backstory. Oh, more onto the uh, strange pop culture phenomenon that appear in Homer Simpson. What is the connection with Stuart Little? Um, yeah, I really have no idea what his obsession is. Maybe it's the fact that something that I've noticed that he used to get played on 10 Heat. So I wonder yeah. if that's yeah, another, you know, another link. So when is the next Homer Simpson set to be released? All I know about the upcoming Homer Simpson episode is that there was a comment that someone left on the YouTube video before YouTube took it down 
because it was such an anticlimax climax at the time, the fact that it took so long and then it was gone within an hour. But um, someone left a comment saying they liked it and they thought that it was the best episode, but they thought that it lacked the ambition of number five. And Huff kind of took that to heart as a constructive criticism. So he's told me that seven is going to be very ambitious. So I don't know whether that means it's going to take a long time or it's going to, you know, be expensive to make. I'm really not sure. But um, the next one is dedicated to William. It's um, kind of based around William's character, but it has a lot of background stuff on the stone colors and everything. So it'll be interesting. That's all I know about it, though. <laughs> That's all I've been told. Well, it sounds very exciting so far. Who knows where it's going to go from here? Yeah, the whole thing has been a roller coaster. Well, um, yep, that's about all I have. So thank you once again for uh, answering all of these perhaps obtuse questions. No worries. So thanks very much for having us on the show. That's all right with me. Have a great night. Hello, my name is Burke. In this presentation, I aim to highlight and contextualize what I find to be some of the most interesting aspects and themes of the Bomberman series, hopefully in a reasonable amount of time. There's a lot to go over, and while I don't think I can talk about every single fine detail, I I still hope this presentation will serve as a fairly comprehensive analysis of Bonnerland, or my interpretation of it anyway. Welcome to Bonnerland. You might be asking yourself, what is Bonnerland? Or, or maybe, where is Bonnerland? Uh, for now, let's put those questions aside and ask, who is Bonnerland? We just might find our answer in Homer Simpson. Homer Simpson lives in the town of Springfield with his wife Marge and his three children Bart, Lissa, and Maggie, the baby Simpson. He works in the Springfield power plant, but is unfortunately fired for wearing a pink shirt in the first scene of Homer Simpson 1. Homer is an unreliable narrator. We follow and share his perspective of Springfield, though upon closer inspection, we unearth the world of contradictions. We dive deep and invade his psyche, but must always be wary of what is fact and what is fiction. Oh. Let's ask a hard question. Did Homer murder Maggie? Considering the extreme levels of guilt and depression Homer experiences, uh, probably, yeah. He describes his guilt as a jail, and as things progress, we realize more and more how much he truly feels he needs to be punished. I believe this is the moment Homer finds himself submerged in Bonnerland, his jail dream state, which confines him to repeatedly live out his trauma in a land of his own projection. While in Bonnerland, Homer allows himself to do more than just suffer. He allows himself moments of clarity and responsibility, gained from his interactions with various figures within Bonnerland. However, this clarity of the effects of his own actions can often feed deeper into his own guilt, creating a vicious cycle. I once again want to emphasize that everything from Homer's perspective is a warped account of what could have happened. Homer relocating himself to Bonnerland represents more of a defined escape from an already distorted world of memories to a self-imposed prison world of negative energy. He navigates Bonnerland, trapped in his mind where he forces himself time and time again to confront uh, both his actions and his past through a variety of traumatizing imagery and surreal encounters. Are you the one they call Armin Tamsarian? I am. Armor, can you hear me? Who are you? Armin Tamsarian. An evil entity which appears to Homer states that it is the guilt that surfaced after what he did to her. 
This dark spirit feeds off negative energy. It is the guilt that keeps on growing. During Homer Simpson 5, Trios of Homer, Armin Tamzarian performs a sort of taunting ritual to celebrate Homer's misery. Armin appears in multiple forms, sometimes even seemingly possessing others. Armin Tamzarian! Manmole, another entity that exists within Bonnerland, has a number of interactions with Homer. His intentions are unclear. On one hand, in the past, he has helped Homer escape from jail. However, on the other hand, he has also presented Homer with numerous ultimatums in which he must, in some way, end his life. Manmole's role in Bonnerland sentience is particularly unusual. That's, that stuff's nuts. I was in the forest with the glowing man? Unlike Manmole or Armin, this entity seems to have no ulterior motives other than to demonstrate the extent of the stonecutter's actions. The glowing man takes Homer to the mass grave of crackers. Now might be a good time to talk about the stonecutters. Who is the stonecutters today? The stonecutters are a dangerous group. Its members are some of Springfield's most powerful and influential leaders. The stonecutters effectively run the town. Here is every confirmed stonecutter. Jeez, I forgot the bananas in pajamas were involved in this. Jeez, just when you think you know everything. <laughs> the Stonecutter's headquarters is the power plant, Palmer's former place of work. The Stonecutter's final goal seems to be the complete eradication of all innocent life in Springfield. Shoot. The Stonecutters believe in the abduction and consumption of Springfield's children. I'm not one of those guys. They make a living eating babies. Children are referred to as crackers. They are kidnapped and taken to the cracker factory. I'm a cracker to be. I'm a cracker to be. And I'm hoping that they'll utilize me. <laughs> Homer is guided towards Blessings Crackers where he watches a stonecutter videotape hosted by Troy McLarry, which demonstrates the cracker preparation project. This videotape seems particularly unbelievable, as in some cases it seems specifically targeted towards Homer. And I'll make Homer pay if he fights back. I'll kill this monkey. Marge was a cracker factory. Bart and Lisa as wide as Stuart. Outside of the factory, Homer sees his mother's grave next to a mysterious open grave. After being exposed to this disturbing scene, the glowing man opens up an interdimensional portal in the woods, transporting Homer to even deeper levels of Bonnerland. Homer emerges from the portal in a new context. He briefly reimagines his life, but to no avail. He creates a new identity and family, but he still can't escape the Simpson house. After all, it is his prison. We see him reinterpreted as Harv H. Simpson. He lives in the Bonnerland suburbs with his wife, Selma, and his three children, Eliza, Lester, and Gaggy. Harv knows that he cannot keep this going. Uh, Homer knows that he cannot keep this going. He wishes for the constant baby crying to stop. He's reached a point of no return. As Harv H. Simpson lays down to rest, William Van Houten bolts up, waking from a dream. This is bull! Wish I could drive the bus! Blessing and William live reclusively, and have moved house multiple times. Despite the isolation, William is still in contact with Lissa and Bart, who are aware that something, something is happening in Springfield. <laughs> they know the face of a man who seems to be involved in kidnapping Springfield's children. Bart says that Lissa has been dreaming about an abandoned house which could be important. Bart scolds William over the phone for leaving him without meeting up, uh, despite the fact that he was also nowhere in sight, which is pretty odd. After a driving lesson from Blessing, Blessing's 
teaching his little boy to drive. Lissa calls William and asks him to come over, but, but William declines as he says he can't sneak out at the time. Bustling watches old family VHS tapes and then drifts into a dream. But later, William inspects some old tapes hidden away in the house. As one tape with a ripped label grabs his attention, he hears the phone ring. Blessing receives a call from the superintendent's brother, who Blessing addresses as Neville. William is being targeted by Neville Chalmers, possibly as some sort of revenge against Blessing for trying to escape the stonecutters. As William pulls the blanket up off the floor, our worst fears are confirmed. We see Bart's skateboard left behind in Chalmers' car. That's not a good sign. That's uh, not a good sign. Neville has already gotten Bart, and most likely Lissa too, meaning that William could very well have been talking to imposters on the phone the whole time. Uh, imposters working to lure William away from Blessing so the stonecutters could get him. Stuart Little and Jerry Seinbluth, the brine sleuth, uh, sit on the couch with no Homer in sight. Uh, I haven't, I haven't mentioned Jerry at all in this presentation. He's, uh, he's got like his own life going on. This is as Bonner as it gets. Uh, no compromises. Uh, flashing colors at the start, which reminds us of, of uh, the end of uh, Hummer 6. Uh, Hummer states the importance of his true love for Marge. Bart says with red eyes, I will never be the man I was. We see sort of a reinterpretation of the opening scene of uh, Hummer Simpson 1, uh, where Hummer is, is sitting in the power plant. But this time it's not Burns who fires him. Uh, it's uh, uh, Hummer texts on an iPhone saying that he's quitting. He's taking his son Bart, his grandson Jonesy, and cousin Enzo uh, along for the ride. <laughs> uh, Enzo wants to know what happened to Sean. Bloodletting. The Simpsons see live. Uh, there Hammer meets Maddie. Jonesy is also there, Bart's, Bart's son. Okay, yeah, then we move on from that. The giant can of Doif is driving the bus. At school Springfield, Mo teaches that sex is unnatural. We cut to a scene where Robert and Homer are standing outside the house and Robert uh, Robert shows it's your fault. Uh, then we have a segment which is Stuart's Guide to Art Appreciation, which we can probably just... Uh... <laughs> Bart and Homer talk at the computer. They have a beautiful father-son talk. Okay, and then we have a, a, a socialist legal education scene. Homer is watching Seinbluth with Jerry Seinbluth himself. Uh, Homer says, Maybe the aliens are watching our show. That's eerie, because that's exactly what's happening. Hummer goes to Moe's, and he sees a, he sees an angry mob in there, and he just he feels a little intimidated. Oh yeah, Moe's got the case of Room for Bad Boys DVDs. I got it written down. Let's try to speed this up a bit. There's a billboard that says uh, Jonathan is going to perform some sort of exorcism on Marge. Grug, Patty's boyfriend, makes contact with Elaine, who is somehow still alive. George is George Michael once again, um, but is now operating under the pseudonym of Springfield. <laughs> and he's looking at uh, room Maggie, it's Maggie's room. And uh, uh, Jerry and uh, cousin Robert are already in there. Jerry says, it was an accident, Robert, as if, as if he's taking the blame for it. Homer stares at the ceiling, he's exhausted. There's a scene at Crutzy Burger where a T-Rex uh, stands there. Uh, Robert says that he likes animals and also specifies that uh, he's a vegetarian. Uh, suddenly Manmole appears, and Manmole is, is uh, he, feel, he feels a lot darker. Oh yeah, then we, there's, there's, there's another great bit. Uh, uh, Hammer, Moe, and Armin, they're, they're, all, they're, they're all playing in their band together, and that's pretty cool. Um, there's, a, there's a very strange scene where Hammer's talking on the computer to Shelley, and he's, uh, 
He's saying that he's like, uh, I, I'm dying to be friends with somebody, but he's like assuming the personality of Robert. Uh, Derry has like a little experience in the deprivation chamber. Yeah, we've got a scene where uh, a Hummer's sitting in his room. Uh, he's looking at a framed picture of Groot, and then uh, a Thomer is introduced. Uh, Barn and Lissa, they're, they're, there's a scene where they're talking. <laughs> Ten minutes later, uh, Hummer's on the toilet, he's on his phone, and uh, a manmole appears, and he says that, uh, I, I gotta read from this, uh, a new species has arrived, and they stink. Uh, Hummer and Robert, uh, they, they get a drink at Moe's. Uh, Robert drinks lots of doif. Uh, Robert says he hates everything. And uh, <laughs> I think that's a very negative thing to say. Uh, Moe talks to Armin in the car. They're having a talk on the computer. At Armin Tamzarian's house, uh, uh, located high in the Bonnerland Hills, uh, Jerry is a guest for the night and he's being completely tormented watching an evil, corrupted version of Stuart Little on the television and Stuart uh, reaches out and starts strangling Armin and it, it's very scary. It's very scary. Jerry's crying. Uh, uh, Flinders is performing his own sort of uh, ritual. And we zoom out slowly and we see that man mole is there. He just says, uh, you're under arrest. Which I think is great. Uh, some sort of cromulent apparition appears. Romber says, uh, it is a dream that I spend every day of my life in prison, which is I mean, that's the core of the series. That's like the most, uh, that's the most straightforward, I, I think, uh, I think it is really. Yeah, fetal burrito, wet dream booth, baby in its seat. The young people are property of the state. Something's being said. Homer, I sleep with my girl at the Daytona International Speedway. And Homer says, I drive the car. Hummer asks, is it true that the baby Simpson dead in your house? Uh, and then like an older Maggie appears. And, and her name is Maggie this time, even though she looks exactly like Maddie. So maybe that's what, uh, maybe that, that whole duality thing, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, Hummer sees her again, but now she's like a framed a baby picture. And uh, he just keeps asking, is it true? Is it true that baby Simpson died in your house? He's very distressed about this. Uh, then Gil shows up, I, I never even talked about Gil. Feels like he makes peace with them. He says he just wanted to, uh, says he could have been his friend. Okay, and we're closing things out. Hammer's, Hammer's uh, bundled in the, the back seat of, of, uh, of his car. Uh, Robert's driving them to the cracker factory. Ultimately, he arrives at the, uh, the conclusion. And he says, uh, hello, I'm Hammer Simpson. To himself, Hammer Simpson. That's, that's the, that's the conclusion. That's the conclusion of, of, of Bonnerland Sentience. It, it, two Hummers drinking themselves out in, in the Cracker Factory, and, and, and then, the, and then the, it all comes to a close. The, the Hummer's brain is dead. There's nothing more. Two aliens are like, oh, well, at least we learned a lot. That's probably, that's probably as close we'll get to a, to a conclusion on what Hummer is, what Bonnerland is. It's a pure stream of consciousness, nightmare, punishment realm. Okay, I uh, hope at the very least this has uh, uh, highlighted a few things that uh, maybe you wish you... Uh, may uh, hello. This is Future Burke. Burke of the future. It's been a, it's been a couple months, but uh, I'm wearing the, I'm wearing the same shirt. Uh, I'm not wearing the baseball cap though because uh, uh, because I don't want to. There's uh, there's been some technical difficulties, severe technical difficulties that have uh, uh, really made this whole thing difficult to put together. But uh, you know, if you're seeing this now, then it came together. Just dropping in here at the end to say uh, thanks for uh, thanks for watching the whole thing. Um, yeah. If, uh, if there's anything I haven't explained or if I uh, failed to touch upon, failed to communicate, then uh, I did that intentionally. Because uh, I respect your intelligence. You, uh, you can figure that out yourself. Uh, anyway. Uh, thanks a bunch. Thanks to Hudson friends. See you around. Homboy. Huh,